nationally syndicated advice columnist. He's written five books and the latest, Getting Naked, Five Steps to Finding Love of Your Life. He says he has found the secret. I told you all he says this, so please welcome right now, Harlan Cohen. Good morning. Thank you. It is awesome to be here. Oh, well, we're glad you're finally here, right here in the Lakeview neighborhood. Yeah, this is my town. This is where I met my wife. Really? Mm -hmm. How I met, many years ago? We had our 10th anniversary a few days ago. Oh. The secret. I met her at the UPS store on Clark Street and she wasn't delivered. Like this was for real. <laughs> she was there making, uh, she was sending a fax and I was making copies and I walked up to her and I said, excuse me, you look really familiar. It's like the worst line ever. Yes. No, that's actually a good one. I like yeah? that one. Oh, you yeah. like, and then, um, and she said, I don't think I know you. And I said, I really think I know you. Are you from here? She said, I lived here till I was five and I moved away. Yeah. And I said, oh my gosh, it's so great to see you after all these years. <gasps> I had no idea who she you was. You just kept going with Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I was just being myself, which could have been creepy. Yeah. Um, but she stayed, although she was forced to stay because she was sending a fax and it didn't go through. Yeah. Um, but we started talking and I was so nervous and so afraid because I'm terribly insecure and uncomfortable. Yeah. But I knew I had to talk to this woman and I asked her for a number uh -huh. and she gave it to me. And you know the craziest part? Okay, we ended up getting married, but she had rejected me on JDate, an online dating service. No way. Three months prior to this, and just serendipity, I bumped into her. But did you oh. know when you bumped into her not, that you had applied for a date for her? No, not till the third date. And I know, oh. yeah, the third date I was in her place, and it, it, you know, it wasn't the sixth date. And, um, <laughs> or the, but no, nothing happened that right. date. Um, yes, you know, yeah, anyway, uh -huh. But I saw, I saw that picture, and I was too afraid to tell her because I didn't want her to think I was a loser because yeah. she had rejected me and she liked me. I fooled her. And, and I didn't want her to know the real me. And then eventually she found out the real me and she loved me. And Aww. she loves me now. How soon did you tell her? Because yesterday we were talking about how soon yeah. you tell people you love them. So how soon did you tell her you loved her? You know, I think she told me first, but she says that I told her first. And I don't really remember, but oh. I know it was early because I knew I felt it and I was so into did this woman. Know? And I had to hold Aww. back because I didn't want to freak her out. Right. Um, but I think like when, and it's so irrelevant. People get so caught up in the when and they talk themselves out of saying what they think. And that text thing that he the man who texts things I hate that yeah Do you know what no I don't hate that a man texts I hate that a woman's gonna judge him for that mm -hmm. because you know oh. what you need, oh yeah because you're so busy judging and and penalizing someone for being honest pointing at me <laughs> I like, know. only at me wow, what did you do? I, was, I, was like, I was watching you and you were like physically repulsed <laughs> by the idea and yeah, and the thing is, if this man, if this is a man who you find interesting, and he, let's say he's so busy, his plane's about to take off because he's going overseas, and he can't call you, and he's not in a place, and he texts you, and you go, oh, he's another loser. How about you saying to him, pick up the phone, I want to talk, and saying, I'm so flattered that you asked me, I have a rule that I only go out with guys who ask me over the phone. And then he says, will you go out with me? So is this and part of knows. your five steps? Because you say there are five steps. Okay. Is that one of them? It's, it's all about saying what you think and doing what you feel. And I can tell all the single people who are watching this or in the audience, there's one reason you're single. And it's because you hate rejection. That's number one. That's just Embrace the, the universal rejection exactly. truth. The universal rejection truth says thousands of men are going to want you. Thousands of women and men are going to want you too. <laughs> women too. But there are millions who don't want you. And when someone doesn't want us, we hate them. We hide from them. We do everything we can to avoid. The universal rejection truth of dating and relationships says not everybody's going to give me what I want. You have to make a choice. Do you hate it and hide from it? Mm -hmm. Or do you say, I give you permission to not want me? But I still want you anyway, and you pursue them, or? Well, you find out, why don't you want me? Uh -huh. See, most people can't handle this. Yeah, you're, you're again, physically <laughs> ill. Oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> really? But don't you think, like, like I, I actually really enjoy being single. Yes, he does. I, I really right. do. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I really. He you're, knows me better than me. You know, well, you're the ahead. guy <laughs> who I hated growing up. Okay. You're attractive, okay? <laughs> yeah. you, you're athletic, right? Yeah. Like, you smell good? Yeah. Or maybe it's you. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> It's always been easy for you. I was five feet two inches, 192 pounds my freshman year in high school, and I wanted to be you. But what I've learned over the years is that being you is sometimes really hard because women will come to you. You'll just sit there and they'll jump on your lap and want you, especially in the position of power you're in. But it's about who do you want? Who, do, well, who are the women that make you so nervous, that excite you to no end, and are you putting yourself out there? And I don't know, maybe you love being single, or maybe deep in there you're afraid of being vulnerable, and you hate rejection too, because it's been easy for you. Mm. I feel like I'm on Dr. Phil wow. at the moment. <laughs> no, you, you bring up some really good points. Wow. Yeah. 
You bring up some really good points, and there's some truth to that, I would say, but for me, like, it, you're right. I want to meet that person that makes me nervous and has the butterflies, and it was that person right. that you can't live without. I've dated a lot of great people in my life, and people that I, I was heartbroken to break their heart in, in, in some way, if that makes sense. Yes. Rejection is awful and getting it's, it. And it's hard, it's hard for both people. Have and you I, been heartbroken? Sure, I have. Somebody broke your heart? Yes, absolutely. Local? At least twice in my life. <laughs> Can I get her number? Right. Oh, call her. Can I, can I, can I congratulate her? Okay. All right. So next point, right. number two. Right. Train in a thong, men and women. And I love, like, Ryan just put on his thong for a second. <laughs> like, you became vulnerable. It's this idea that we are so uncomfortable taking risks because we hate rejection that we will not say what we think and do what we feel. Put on your physical thong. You need to know you're hot enough. Put on your emotional thong. You need to know you're good enough. And put on your spiritual thong, this idea that, God forbid, your fiancé tomorrow says goodbye. Mm -hmm. What do you have in your life that fills your cup? And if you have nothing, you're never going to be able to handle rejection. When someone says, this is what's on my mind, you're going to say, I don't want to hear it. I hate you. Right. But when you can handle rejection, when you're comfortable in your thong and you know you're all that right. and you have the right people in your corner, you can handle the feedback. Yeah. And that's why you know, these men, they're handicapped. They don't know how to attract a woman like you, a strong, mm -hmm. beautiful woman like you. And you yeah. need to help them. And I know you don't want to. Oh. I know you don't want them. I want to say, in the book, you say to actually put on a, f physically put on a thong mm -hmm. and then stand in, a, in okay. the mirror. Mm -hmm. I have never I said this. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did this. I was living on Clark Street and I put on not a thong, but like very tight white underwear. They were horrible. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I hated what I saw. I was, I hated it. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I made a commitment. I said, I'm going to work to be my best physically. I'm going to work to be my best emotionally. I'm going to do these things. I didn't call it training, but I ran the Chicago Marathon. Oh, good for you. I, I was the guy who cried when I was 13 when I had to you know, do the mile. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I wrote these books, and I started to be more vulnerable. And I would have never been able to walk up to that woman at mailboxes, et cetera, you know, now, yeah. now the UPS store, yeah. if I hadn't looked in the mirror and, and done the work. Whitey. Right, because I was so afraid of rejection. Taking risks is uncomfortable, yeah. and we're yeah. awful at it. All right. Okay. So number. Did, did you did you run the marathon in the tidy room? <laughs> oh my okay. gosh, that would have been awesome. Okay. Oh goodness, we only have time for about one more. I tell you what, out of the top five, you give yeah. us your next one. You know, what? stop making excuses. Okay. Say it and do it. If you're single, if someone, if some woman out there wants to date you, Ryan, they should reach out to you because you are accessible. You have to say it and do it. Take that risk. And then the last thing is celebrate no matter what because you've done something. Your significant other is out there. I promise it with absolute certainty. And that's this whole getting naked approach. Hi, mm. it's really? in the wow. book. Great stuff, Harlan. Yeah. Thanks. And you can find out where to get Harlan's book at his website, gettingnakedexperiment.com. Great website name. And I guess what? Everybody in the audience is getting a copy of the book.